welcome again and welcome to tonight's presenter, Anil Kuma, who is working for Commerce Tools and who will introduce us tonight to Atlassian Forge and especially to Atlassian Forge and how we can build our dream workflow uh, with Atlassian Forge. So if you ever have ever dreamt about workflows or if you are one of those people who dreams about workflows, this one is for you. And with that, uh, over to Anne. Welcome again. And uh, I will just disappear and see you on the other side. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jörg. And um, thanks for giving me opportunity to present. Uh, as Jörg said, I'm Anil Kumar. I'm a product manager at uh, Commerce Tools. Uh, building open source uh, tools for commerce applications. And uh, today I'm going to talk about um, uh, the my experience building Atlassian Forge apps. And I will talk you through uh, what, what made me into a uh, get dig into Atlassian Forge. And I will also talk about why it's really, really so cool. And even you can play around with it, even if you're not really a hardcore or even if you're not a developer. So let's get started. Um, the, the pain point I had uh, with uh, marketplace apps, um, I'm not sure like um, you ever had a problems with the marketplace apps. Yes, the marketplace apps are really great and um, you get a lot of really great apps to work on and um, they're good. But uh, in my case, I, I was like, kind of, I had a really issues with the marketplace apps. Uh, for example, uh, I'm, I'm coming from the development background and uh, I was planning to create an automation uh, build pipeline uh, for one of our uh, front-end web development uh, in my previous consulting role. And uh, the consulting company already had a marketplace was test management for Jira. And it was already decided by the project managers and it was kind of not fitting our need. And I was kind of forced to use this tool and which was kind of making me that not efficient. And uh, with, along with other uh, quality assurance um, uh, managers, uh, we decided to give a try after a couple of uh, uh, research and comparing the different tools. And you can see that like we, I tried to use this as a dot PDD uh, marketplace app in our uh, workflow to really automate our quality process for our web development application. But what I what happened was like it was never this uh, marketplace app was never a right fit for our need. When I say need, like we had a really more than hundred feature files to test our application, and it was mainly used by developers. And developers were looking for certain insights. We were running a lot of nightly tests, and so on. Uh, the the dashboards were not insightful for us, and we were kind of feeling like a handicapped like not able to do. And also the marketplace apps were taking a lot of time to load as we had more number of feature files. It was kind of a thing like, hey, uh, this is not what we wanna have. And um, surprisingly, like I was uh, in the um, February, 2021, I was in Bo uh, Bangalore. I'm from Bangalore. I've been in Berlin from last five years, but yeah, I was uh, there to visit my parents and um, I also read about Atlassian started a new office in Bangalore. And with one of the, my connections from the Atlassian community, I got a chance to get an option, opportunity to visit the Atlassian headquarters. And I got a, one of the community person from Bangalore office. Uh, the right side is me and the left side is uh, Manjunath. He's one of the developer who works for the marketplace at Atlassian. So I had a really, really interesting conversation about agile process and all the issues I have with the uh, marketplace apps I've been using it. And I think Manjunath said like, hey, um, yes, we know that. And uh, have you ever tried Forge, he said. And that time it was like, it's, it was in, still in beta. And um, I think I got access to uh, Forge immediately. And I think he said like, hey, you should definitely give a try. I think this can make you kind of, you can build your workflow, you can build what is what it required for your team and you can build it really fast. And that was kind of like really excited me that, hey, definitely I want. And I immediately got access to the, uh, the beta 
and I built a couple of apps uh, and also tried to solve the problem we had at our office uh, on automating the development flow. And to start with, um, to understand a forge, uh, I think we have a mixture of audience today. Uh, I will try to keep my presentation more uh, applicable for everyone. And in the demo section, we can take a look into the deep uh, coding and what's, what's happening and how is the connection is happening. So on a nutshell, uh, what you can think of is like a forge is a kind of a, a flexible, uh, adaptable, a Lego block, a block. So, and you can imagine like your Jira or a Confluence uh, platform as a board. So you have your flow and it's kind of a Lego block you can just put in and which kind of adaptable and uh, kind of flexible. And uh, what, what the Forge is contains, like what, what, what the Forge app is contains. Forge app is a very sim simple one. What it has, it has a UI and it has like a business logic. What do you wanna do? Um, uh, so, and um, you can just think of it's like it contains only two things. On top of it, if you, if you, if you look at the, what's happening at the Forge app, I'm going to explain all the details at the coding level, and you're going to see how is how is the apps are looking like in action uh, in the in the later stage. But this is a kind of a, a brief kind of an overview what's happening. So you can see here, it doesn't matter whether you're accessing your Atlassian uh, products like a Jira or Confluence, either in mobile or desktop. All the user requests, all the user interactions which you do with Forge UI, goes to the a cloud that is um, a function as a service. Uh, if you are familiar with cloud, like AWS, they all, uh, Google Cloud, they all offer a function as a service. Uh, basically, your processing of your request, like user requests, it can be clicking a link, it can be clicking um, a button, action button. All the requests goes to uh, the executed on the cloud. And it brings a lot of advantage, I'm gonna talk later. and. It, it sends back again and gets the update, the UI. And what other benefits is like, you have API, you can literally connect it to any service you, you can think of. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you next couple of my, what things I've built, and you can really uh, imagine like the sky's the limit. Uh, that, that, that makes you like uh, super flexible and you can really um, build applications much faster. And to understand, to understand what's, what's happening there, um, like I explained, uh, imagine the Forge UI are just like a slots uh, which you can plug in in your Jira or a Confluence page. And Atlassian uh, developer ecosystem platform provides you such sockets or such kind of a slots where you can just plug in your Forge UI. And uh, again, I'm gonna show you that more details later. And as I said, all your application is gonna run uh, and your UI is get updated and processed on the cloud. Each request, each request, nothing happens on your client. Nothing happens on your browser. Nothing happens on your uh, uh, mobile application client. So all the requests, business logic, everything is processed on the cloud. And you can uh, typically connect to any APIs um, services, any database services. Uh, you can connect uh, with your Forge app. Okay, uh, let, let's take a look. Uh, what's, the, what's the UI? What's the UI look like? Yes, uh, you said it's, it has a slots and it has a plugin. So what, what does the plugin look like? Uh, it, it consists of mainly UI. And uh, if you look at the documentation of the Forge UI, Forge UI, you can think of it's like, a, a, they give you a set of, uh, set of Lego blocks to work on. And the good part is you don't need, you don't need a designer. Uh, you don't need, you can build your application which will be consistent to Jira and Confluence app. And uh, you have like a set of uh, ready-made available Lego blocks of UI, uh, which is Forge UI. You can just pick them and start playing around with uh, your Forge application slot. And you can then connect the data with API and all the process will be executed on the cloud. And coming to the business logic, um, you wanna connect and you wanna talk and you wanna most do some uh, complex business logic of uh, uh, doing some logical operations and you can run all those operation and execute on the cloud. And to me, this is my definition. Uh, this is, I have no claims to with the Forge uh, Atlassian document, but this is what I thought by building Forge application. 
which is like, it's a React style declarative UI. It's basically a UI application. It's a building a UI application. Uh, if you're in a software development, you might be familiar with uh, React um, ecosystem like React framework or library uh, where you can build the UIs um, and access to data through APIs. So basically you can query and request uh, any kind of data and execute your business logic on a function as a service uh, platforms. So that, that Atlassian Forge provides you that platform for you and Forge lets you to build more with less. That's really, really important because um, let's say your team has some problem and uh, they wanna build something uh, to see if it fits their needs. They can actually get it done in a couple of hours to really validate that, hey, uh, is it something we can build and validate and works? Uh, so the development time is very, very shorter. Like you can quickly build application really, really fast. And other benefits, uh, other benefits, if I think of why, why you need to care about Forge is it's secure. Your application, what you build application, it's secure and it's running on cloud. So when you're running it on a browser, you have to worry about cars and you have to worry about the cross-site scripting, um, all the things you have to worry. Uh, but uh, with uh, Forge, the Atlassian, Atlassian uh, platform will take care of the security things for you. By default, your application, Forge application is completely secure. And as I said, when I was expanding the Forge UI, you don't need to be a designer. or you don't need a designer in your team because uh, your Forge UI is, have a very, very minimum uh, options to customize it because it fits into your uh, Jira or a Confluence page. And it's also very, very intelligent enough to fits to your mobile devices and also your desktop when you're opening a Jira or a Confluence. So it, it takes care of itself. And um, that's what I meant, like write once and run everywhere. So you don't need to run uh, applications for mobile devices or mobile apps or uh, for desktop. So you write once and you run it everywhere. And other, other biggest advantage is uh, the learning curve. The learning curve to get started with Forge is very, very minimum. In fact, you can like really get master in a very quick time, unlike another uh, UI tools or frameworks. And also I'm really happy that the, the Forge community um, and dedicated Slack uh, group, uh, which also really, really supportive. So in that way you can really get, um, get into your ants dirty and get started working on Atlassian Forge. And also um, it, it helps you like Forge, uh, Forge also helps you to consume a lot of uh, backend, uh, backend applications or backend APIs, and you don't have to worry implementing them. And which makes you like build complex applications with simple UI and quicker. So that's the benefit of um, Forge. And um, for me, I compare Forge uh, to Uber. Uh, if, if you ever used a, a taxi service app or a Uber app, uh, like uh, th think, of, think of Forge as a Uber. Uh, because um, imagine, let's say I wanna go from, uh, since I'm in Berlin, I wanna go from uh, Friedrichshain to Mitte, uh, just only once a month, uh, not regularly. Uh, of course, I can use public transportation, something which is kind of urgent. I want to take my family, it's cold. Uh, I can book a rent, I can rent a, uh, I can, I can, with one tap, I can book an Uber and I can go. Uh, so that way uh, I don't have to own the car. I, can, I, I don't have to worry about the insurance. I don't have to worry about the parking space. Uh, so that way i think uh, i'm using kind of like a, a service which just uh, does my requirement uh, which which solves my problem and similarly uh, atlassian forge apps kind of it's it's like a uber for your app development if you're ever uh, trying to build some web applications it it takes care of all the security concerns uh, it gives you all the tool which you need uh, and deployment and all the devops and backend related complex things which you don't have to worry they take care of the boring stuff for you and you can focus on building a business logic and you can also focus on building a UI which you wanted to get. Um, yeah, uh, so that's why I would say like use the right tool for right job. So in that way, uh, I think for, for us, like when I was experimenting on it, which requires a specific need for our team, uh, which the general marketplace app was not fulfilling, uh, that way, the Forge UI was really helping us, or uh, at least able to kind of really getting into or uh, really solve our problem. And we don't need another extra features to build, and we just can focus on what to build. 
And uh, I think it has been like my journey started from March and uh, I think I've been quite active in the couple of months like March, April, May. And um, I think after June, I had a kind of my parental time. I didn't get a much focus uh, on it, but I've, I've built a couple of apps uh, using Forge. I would like to show you uh, which kind of like really uh, might be interesting for you. Uh, maybe we can have a discussion later. So let's get started. Uh, the one thing which was like uh, I was talking about is um, building automation. Uh, that's, that's where it started. Uh, I started hating the marketplace app which was like not fulfilling our dream uh, of uh, getting a really good insights. And I was being a developer or developers were pushing the changes on a GitHub or Bitbucket and our deploy CI CD platform was running application, running automation tests. And with Forge app, I can, I can display the results on my Confluence page. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, th this is the result from running the automation test on my one of the sample application. And you can see here, its status says success, and, and it ran here this time, and you can see all the details here. That's all I needed. And I don't need complex additional features. And when something fails, um, my application uh, says that, hey, this is went wrong, and your step, this is where, where it, it got wrong. So this is one of the place where uh, Atlassian Confluence provides me a slot to build an application on a Forge UI. Uh, it's a slot. I can apply, I can feed information here dynamically. And I'm gonna show that in action later in one of the sample application. Okay, uh, the second one uh, uh, application which I built was, uh, it was kind of a, my hobby project. Like I was like a lot of user stories, uh, if you're familiar with the Agile Scrum process, uh, the product managers or product owners uh, create a lot of user stories on Jira. And most of the time I see that they're kind of trying to fill uh, kind of a requirement, kind of solution, but there is no really outcome to measure the success of the uh, user story. So I thought of like, why can't I give a feedback to those product owners and product managers so that they can really kind of take a look uh, if those stories has to be revisited, uh, can be updated. So what I did was like um, in the Jira, uh, like the, there is a one, one extension point, uh, uh, Jira Forge provides you like an issue panel area in the Jira application, uh, Jira as user story page, where I can run the, my application, which basically uh, uses some search services and see if it's an outcome story or an output story. And based on that, I get some GIF image from my uh, uh, API service from Giphy, and I show it in my in the in the user story ticket. And you can see that it's a good, uh, it's, it's a good story or a bad story uh, to consider. Uh, for example, uh, you can see here, this is the interface um, uh, for the Jira user story, increase application page speed. So there is an outcome, like you can really measure the success of this. Uh, you can say it, it's, it's saying that it's an outcome story. Looks good, don't forget to measure the success of story and also I have a Giphy. And if something is like implement a new dashboard page, Yes, it says, but it really doesn't talk about what is the pain points of the user and what you have to measure here. And you can see here, it's an output story with a warning. Consider revisiting the goal of this story and update the story. So you can give a feedback to product owners and product managers. And this is a UI extension point as a slot uh, on the Jira uh, story uh, page. I can, I can show you more details later. And this is also very funny. Uh, like uh, I, I really kind of enjoyed building this. Uh, like uh, I was thinking like, what if we can kind of, uh, those people who are not familiar with the uh, Atlassian tools, like normal users, like most of them use WhatsApp, at least most of the users, uh, user, user base. What if we can have somehow uh, submitting or creating a bug tickets uh, or uh, creating a task using a WhatsApp message? And how I created is like um, uh, with Forge app, like I can have a, a trigger, uh, I can send a, a text message as a bug or a, tick, uh, or, or a ticket and uh, with using a Twilio service and I can check if it's a bug or a resp or if it's a, if it's a, a task uh, based on the description. Like if the user is displaying error message or some more thing and if they're asking for some improvements, it will be a task. Uh, so then I was kind of creating tickets uh, in my, Jira uh, project board um, to display this information. So this is how it looked like. So I created a create Jira issue 
improve visibility of the navigation links. And here, like if I want to create some uh, issue, not able to add item to cart. So this sounds like a, a bug and this sounds like an improvement, which is like a task. And you see here, this is how you get it. Not able to add item to a cart and improve visibility of the navigation links. So uh, using the Forge app, uh, you can uh, really control and have more uh, uh, workflows you can think of. And other, uh, other interesting um, example, which I did was uh, uh, persona. Like if you're familiar with the uh, user stories and the project management or product management, we are working on it. Generally, the user stories are focused on the user, right? Um, using the Jira issue panel, I also wanted to display the right target user. And I collected in an air table, uh, all the information about our persona, which we are building on it and their username and images and their behaviors and pain points and goals. And using Forge UI, I was also able to get this data and display it in the Jira issue panel so that uh, uh, whenever somebody developers or designers or product managers or product owners working on um, this particular story, they know that our target user is having this pain point. So it helps us kind of a reminder uh, that we are, we are working on their pain points. Okay, many examples. This is how it looks like. Uh, you can see the persona information and the host. And uh, this one also something um, also interesting, like I, I built something called as a Slack office bot uh, for my, uh, at my previous consulting company. And uh, every time the office management wanted to send some updates, regular updates and regular reminders, and they were always coming and asking uh, 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 Slack office uh, uh, developers to update the things. And what I created is a Confluence page where they can actually uh, create uh, a request, uh, update the messages so that they can schedule the message and it will be delivered to all the employees and then as a notification uh, at regular time. So that they don't have to learn new tool, they can already use uh, um, a confluence, they were using already the confluence application. Uh, so in that way, uh, we actually reduce the effort on dependency with the developers. And you can see here, this is the interface, like uh, I had set of tasks, which you can do it on a confluence page, send instant messages to all, schedule a message to all, uh, uh, show scheduled messages and so on. Like you can quickly open uh, your confluence page, click on that and um, with this interface, uh, you can actually set up or send the messages that was only possible with using the Forge uh, application. Okay, I think I'm gonna show you the demo time. We got some application here, we got simple button here. And you see here uh, a secondary button. I already have, I already created a Forge application, which is a slot. I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can add a new Forge application. And let's try to update uh, update this button color to something else, just to see if it really works. What our extension? So I'm gonna change this color, and I'm gonna just reload this page. Hopefully, it should work. So this is a Forge application. You see here my application is reflecting basically I'm using the Figma API uh, to access these IDs and it returns me an image uh, using this ID. I'm able to query uh, this design file and I'm able to get the, this application uh, information and I can display it here. So if I open it, uh, let's say, I can, if I do, you can see here, I, I will be having Forge. You can see here a couple of examples I created it, which are for Forge application. And let me try to add, I created a sample, um, sample uh, uh, Forge app for this um, meetup. Let's say I'm trying to add, And it says just hello world, but uh, let's try to change that one. So it's hello world. 
And here is my application, which is not all over, we just changed something. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do something like forge tunnel. Basically, uh, my application is not deployed. Uh, my application is not deployed. So uh, this is a way of I'm running locally. Uh, I wanna see results on my Confluence page. Um, this is the application. Uh, basically, I started a forge tunnel and this is what you see as an application. And uh, let's see, you can see here, my, my development is instant, it's updating it. And uh, before I move into the browser to show you a demo, um, you can see it's a simple manifest file, which says that, um, which has some ID information. Um, and it says the module and which is a macro application, I'm building it and some, some meta information and starting point for the application. And this is the declarative style, uh, which is like I'm specifying a, a text, uh, that's all. And you can also have many, many different options. Think of it's like a Lego block, right? So you have a button, button sets. Uh, let's, let's try to add button, which does nothing, but still we can have, we can have, Okay, so you, you can keep adding a Lego blocks, which uh, Atlassian provides. So you don't have to worry about the, uh, uh, the text or you don't have to worry about the styling and designing of these things. I hope, okay, now let me switch to uh, my browser and I want to see if it, once before, if it works, I'm gonna show you. Yes, uh, there's an error. I know what's the reason. I think I have to pass uh, as a text and it doesn't like to take the, you, you get all the other information on the, uh, on the application when you're uh, trying to run for the, uh, you will see on the conference page, which is, now it looks, it's loading, yes. You see here, hello Berlin, good evening and a hello button. Of course, it's thrown into error, but it has to handle because it's not doing anything. And the action, I have to declare what has to happen if I deploy some actions. But yeah, uh, basically this is one slot uh, where we can add. And um, what else, what else, um, what else I had? Um, I think this one I already covered. Um, and um, um, yeah, I think we can also take a look into the, we can take one more example, which uh, uh, no, it's already, we already did it. Uh, one more example on the uh, Jira, uh, Jira user story or a story page. I created a simple to-do application using Forge. So let's try to add some to-do. And this is a issue panel. You can have tens of, different issue panels. And you can see here, um, I can add a to-do and I can also, hey. And you have API to who is the current user, creator, and you can mark it as done and you can delete. And I can also add talk to things like that. And um, I can be market as done. And you can see um, this, and I can also delete this. And you, you get, um, you, you can pretty much do, um, control your, your Jira, like how you want for your needs. And there is also a UI extension. You can see here, there's a level. There's also UI extension for slot, slots here where you can build something which might be useful. And also there might be uh, options to build some kind of uh, action items here. And there are, there are different uh, slots which uh, Atlassian provides. And I think they're increasing it and I think they're working on it. 
And um, yeah, question to you is like, do you have any, any kind of uh, apps you would like to build something for your daily use cases? Uh, think of uh, think of like if you have any pain points with your marketplace apps or some kind of uh, with your day to day uh, using Confluence or uh, building the Jira um, using Jira. If you think something can be improved, something can be automated, uh, you can discuss with your developers and see. Uh, I think it doesn't have to be like um, you don't have to sit for two weeks. You can just sit sit for two hours. Uh, like you can have a basic uh, a prototype or a basic proof of concept version. Uh, with Forge, and uh, they have a really good documentation. Uh, you can see how it works and see if it fits your need. And uh, as a next step, uh, if you if, if if it sounds interesting for you, uh, I would highly recommend you to uh, check out the documentation. Uh, I think uh, documentation is really really good 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 place to start, and they have a couple of really hello world applications to get started, like a step by step instructions, and they also have more advanced. Uh, uh, applications and also I think in, in uh, July I guess um, June or July I think they did a hackathon and uh, you can take a look at the code gist uh, dev post uh, hackathon like you can find really hundreds of different uh, apps built using the forge and um, I also happy to share that three of my apps got selected in the top 100 forge apps in that context and um, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I also uh, did some interview with the uh, Atlassian um, uh, marketing team. And I also kind of discussed basically uh, what's my workflow and why uh, Forge is a good uh, platform to build some applications faster, quickly, uh, in a more effective way. And uh, to summarize, uh, uh, to summarize, I don't work for Atlassian. And if you have questions related to pricing and if you have more deep deep data like our architecture and if you have concerns about uh, hosting and deployment and marketplace for forge apps i think i'm not the person uh, i think uh, you can have atlassian forge as something like a, a slack group uh, you can get into the slack group and you can ask all the detailed questions like that they have a, a product managers marketing managers and uh, product developers, developer advocates, uh, they can all help you and I, I can highly recommend that. And with that, uh, thank you very much. And um, yeah, I'm open for questions now. Perfect, thank you very much. And we will include all the links in the show notes as always. Um, so you don't have any to write anything down. Um, and while I promote everybody to the panel, um, uh, give, me, let me, give me just a second. We have questions, um, two, uh, I don't, three exactly. Uh, the first one, I don't think you can answer that one. Will there be something similar for server and data center deployment options so that you can um, basically update, uh, do, this, do this function as a service on server and data center instances? Uh, again, uh, my my knowledge with the Atlassian infrastructure is very limited. I think I will just pass into, just reach out to the Forge team. Um, maybe they can give you. I, I have no information for on server. Yeah. That uh, yeah, that was it. so. Um, and the next question is: uh, Usually, we hear from plugin vendors that the API for Jira Cloud is way more limited than the ones for the server and data center. Um, and again, are there any plans to enhance them? Are there some shared APIs? Uh, I don't know if you can answer that one. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, what, what I can answer is definitely not exactly that answer, but what I can say, uh, like, I, my, again, my interaction with Atlassian team is like very limited. Like uh, I interacted uh, kind of regularly, like for two months. But uh, the, what, what I can say is like the Forge team is they're really, really active. Like if you have a really use case and you say something is really missing and you can actually create a Jira ticket on the open Jira for Forge or a connect uh, and they are kind of quite active and uh, you can reach out to the people and they're quite response, like the response like, hey, uh, this is in our roadmap. We are working on this sprint. Uh, it's gonna come in. Uh, in, in uh, October release or something like that, you'll get to know, and you'll also be the first person to get to know uh, like beta access 
like if it's something interesting for you, uh, I, I would say if you're really curious about, and if it's really kind of, a, you see that is a missing feature, uh, I think please reach out again to the Atlassian team. Uh, that way, uh, I think they're, they're quite act active and they would be really happy uh, if, if somebody they can really uh, listen, uh, get back to them. Okay. So um, again, also via the Slack channel and the community group, I guess that will be yeah. answers there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and one regarding your applications, regarding the to-do app, um, you showed, do you deal with custom field contexts and store the data on the ticket in a custom field? Or did you store the data within active objects? Um, I think uh, it was in the, uh, I think uh, it was on the ticket uh, itself, like uh, the storing, storing API. I use the store API uh, to store for the, that particular ticket. Okay. So um, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of like if you're familiar with JavaScript and it's like a, kind of a local storage. Uh, I would say like you, it's a key value pair basically, and uh, I'm just storing them in the key value pair, and just accessing them and uh, basically using a store API. Okay. So um, this works like functions as a service, as you said. So um, yeah. in your experience, is it actually foolproof? So can you make a mistake and something runs amok or does it always warn you if you, for example, uh, delete a hundred tasks or something before you delete a hundred tasks? How much, how much damage can you do with that? Um, I think it's, uh... Uh, I think if you're if you're familiar with serverless, um, it's 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 basically uh, it's also like it's it's a server running. You have much you, you do the same coding as as if you're running on your own server. The only thing is you don't run it on your computer. We're just running it on the very secure um, AWS, uh, which uh, Atlassian take care of a secure way. You basically run there. And the good part is, uh, let's say, I, I'm, I'm doing, a, I'm using a Forge app, and uh, you just start to pay for uh, your application only, like how many people use it. Let's say I'm, I built some Forge app, and if my company is not using it at all, you, you will not pay for it. And unlike marketplace, like uh, let's say I have 100 people in the company, and whether the people are using it or not, I think uh, you will be paying the yeah, the monthly fee for those marketplace apps. So um, from from the from that perspective also like it's it's really uh, good and I think it's uh, very secure. Okay, um, so that, that's is that is usage based. Um, yeah. Another question: um, Could you talk about a bit about the permissions that you need to to deploy a Forge app? And uh, what you showed us was pretty immediate. So you wrote something, it uploaded it. Uh, it uh, um, how would the staging workflow look like? So do you need a separate instance um, or how does that look like? So. Um, I, th I think, um, uh, um, can, I, can I share my screen? And again, I can show you, actually yes. we can actually build, I, we can actually build something and I can show you what permission it asks for me. Yeah. So we, 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 can, we can start from scratch and we can build some uh, one, one more application. Um, okay, let me try to share my code sandbox again. And uh, let me go back one step back. And I'm on my forge. I hope you can see my screen and I think the font size is okay. No, yeah, should be. Okay. Uh, if not, let me know. Okay, so what I can do is I can just create, uh, I can create a forge app and um, I'm already authenticated my app, like uh, my meetup. And, and just forge. as a reminder, sorry, Anil, you are all on the panel now. So if you want to ask something, just open your microphone or your video and ask it or use the Q&A box. So feel free to do that. Yeah, um, sure, um, thank you. So you can see I'm entering a name and that's a test. Uh, let's create a test macro app. Uh, macro app. So it's asking me, you see here, uh, I start with a template um, and it's asking me to give, I, I can, I can, it has a different slots for Confluence and um, and it can it can start. I can start using. Uh, you can see I can build something for Jira. I can build something for Confluence. So let let's let's stick to Confluence macro. And I'm creating this new app, and it creates me the new app. 
and it's downloading and registering it and um, installing and and uh, the, basically when when I'm when I'm going to install it it asks for me the permission I need to give a permission to install it on my um, user account on my on the cloud so which I wanted to show you um, okay so now I can see I have two applications and this is the one I created it so I'm gonna do CD my here what I can do is I can deploy it and it just deploys it but it will not install it mm -hmm. it's deploying on the cloud And it, it might take one or, one or two minutes. And you basically defined the environment and everything in the manifest. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, you, you also don't have to do it. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. unless until you have uh, like uh, specific keys and specific variables, uh, mm -hmm. like where you wanna store. I think uh, Atlassian has a, their recommended way of doing it. So it's deployed now. My application is there, but it's nobody's using it. But, but I want to I want to install this application on my Confluence workspace. Uh, now what I have to what I have to do is I'm going to do and I'm going to install it. This time, now uh, I have to give a permission uh, to this application. What all things it can access it, which uh, uh, I'm going I have to switch the window, switch the screen, and I have to show it on the Chrome. Uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, Okay, so it asks for me, it's a Confluence. Definitely, I need to give a permission for Confluence. Uh, so it is asking for me the URL. I'm gonna get my uh, Confluence um, URL. Uh, oops, I have to exit my Chrome. So my works, my basically my domain is, is this and installing to development moment and now it opens for me it see it's it's asking for me to open here and i'm gonna i'm gonna open this uh open it and i will gonna i'm gonna switch the window so that you can see what permissions it's asking for mm -hmm. um, i hope this is the right one yeah you, you see here okay. access to all jira scopes access to all confluence api scope uh, view user profile app storage scope and and this is on my workspace and I updated my meetup Berlin test macro app and I accept it. And okay. once it's, it's authenticated, I give a, I given a full permission to this app. Now what I can do is uh, now I can go and edit it. Uh, this is a slot. Uh, this is a, a slot on the Confluence page and um, I can just add my, I can search for my meetup uh, I meet up. Oops, it should be there. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, I have to change the name on the uh, on the manifest. It might be taking. A, a, oops, I, I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to see what's the name. Uh, no, it's the okay. The principle. Has. The principle is clear. I think that's that's okay. okay. That's just a typo and it's a demo and whatnot. Um, so, but in your instance, you have to be a site administrator to do that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, also, and also, the, and also, the other thing is like, um, which is I, I, I never did it because uh, mm -hmm. I was using only for myself. Like, if your teammates wanted to give the permission to access to their things, it also asks for you to authenticate first time uh, in order to use those uh, apps. So mm -hmm. you can also have to give authentication. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah, that's that's what you told me that you prepared your autocad notification beforehand. Okay, yeah. perfect. We have two questions in the chat. Um, uh, the first question is curious: Why hasn't Forge received much publicity? Speaking with Atlassian group members, there's not much knowledge about this platform. Any info that Atlassian is coming next with the Forge ecosystem? It was very prominent during the summit, as far as I remember. It was even part of a keynote. If I if I don't forget it, so that was a actually a centerpiece at this year's summit 
so it, it received a lot of publicity um and there's a uh, there's yeah if correct me if i'm wrong but that's what i remember yeah yeah i think um at least at least my interaction this is only my view uh mm -hmm. nothing to with this is my view i think at least my interaction with the atlassian designers and uh, developers who are working on the uh, forge i think they are really cautious about to release it to um public they kind of had a beta release and they had a really ag aggressive yeah. testing and feedback um i think they made a really uh, really uh, a very iterative progress um yeah i, I think uh, what i can say is that like um i don't know about the marketing but uh, uh, like like i showed you right yeah. i think uh, they, they did they did, a, they did something like a code code, um, code hackathon for forge and I think they had a really, really huge prize and you could see a lot of applications were built on it, like hundreds yeah. of Forge applications. I think, the, I think they, will, they will try to make this uh, even more, I guess, in the coming years. And also um, something to connect with the Connect. Um, I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I, again, my knowledge is very limited, but I think uh, I, I would say it's a huge investment from Atlassian. I think uh, yeah. you can really look for, looking forward for more Forge applications and more Opportunities, and they want they want also want to expand to uh, Bitbucket and other uh, integrations as well. Yeah. And they already they already are way ahead of translating documentation and everything. So the website and everything is available in German, for example, because we are in Berlin. Um, and I, as far as I saw it, quite a few other languages. So um, that is actually quite on the forefront. Um, and there's another question, which is maybe more up your alley. Um, did I understand it right? It's, it's not only useful, but necessary to have a deep understanding of serverless computing? Um, no, that, that's, that's what it's trying to solve, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think uh, it's, it's, like a, it's like a Lego block. And uh, I think you, you, get, you get a set of Lego blocks or 10 or 12 Lego blocks, which is basically form, buttons, all those things, and uh, you 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 only have to know. Uh, I think a very basic uh, JavaScript of how you can connect, uh, request a, a API, and get a data, and just build a UI from that data. What you got? So I think if you can do that, uh, you don't really shouldn't know about more about uh, serverless computing. I think that's that's what the serverless is trying to solve. Like they take care of the burden of DevOps, DevOps and backend uh, engineering. So they're making you build these complex applications in a very uh, simple steps. And yeah, I think if, if you're really concerned about the security and what all the marketing deployments, all those things, maybe yeah. then you might, you might need to know a little bit about like how my uh, app is gonna be deployed and where it's gonna be deployed and which uh, data center it's gonna be deployed. Do you have to take care of the GDPR? Uh, all those things, maybe uh, maybe there you need to comp uh, worry about. But if you want to build something, uh, I think uh, I also saw a couple of their talks in the, from the Forge uh, product managers. Their aim is to, uh, uh, for Forge is to somebody who doesn't have technical knowledge, they should also be able to build the apps. So mm -hmm. that's, that's their goal. So from that point of view, I can say that uh, they want to make very, very friendly uh, platform where anybody has some idea. They can just plug those UIs and connect to some data point endpoint and build uh, some apps on top of it. Yeah, especially because the the editor that you showed, once it's connected, it provides you all the building blocks uh, as options. So that's um, pretty easy. You don't have to know um, what the Jira button is called or what the context is called. That's all basically part of the options. You scroll down and can plug and play and play around with your options. That's, that's the point. Um, and then you of course need the basics like scripting. Uh, that was JavaScript, what you showed us? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a, it's a basic JavaScript and they also have a support for TypeScript. Yeah. But um, I think you don't all, also have to be expert in JavaScript. Like I said, if mm. you know how you can uh, do a, a request, which they, also, which they already have an API, uh, mm. API for fetching the data, and you just have to refer their API. And other other good part is like you get a code for everything. If you go to a documentation, you just start to copy their code and replace their URL with your your URL endpoint. Okay. You get a data. So that makes it even easier for you to getting started. So basically choose your Lego block, cut and paste your yeah. Lego block, paste it in, yeah. and you build your rocket basically. So 
Um, right. And then you need you need to know, of course, uh, stuff like YAML for the manifest. So, but only I, the basics that didn't look too complicated. It's not like yeah. pages and pages of I don't know, Terraform manifest or whatever. That's that's I, really easy. I, I built I built more than ten applications. I think more than ten or fifteen applications so far. The only reason I had to touch that was only when I want to work on something like a. Uh, web hooks like uh, basically I connected WhatsApp with the Twilio. I want to get the request from Twilio and I want to define my endpoint. That's the mm -hmm. only time I touched the uh, YAML. Uh, I think the out of 15 times building application, that's the only time. But uh, uh, for that one also, they have a really good documentation. Mm -hmm. And this also made me to build more application. Yeah. Yeah. So and um... There's another question. Is it already possible to create a Forge app that executes a post function? Uh, maybe this post function handles data from a custom field so that it goes, that goes, yeah. So post function in the workflow. Um, it executes post a post function. I'm, 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 really, I'm really not sure about uh, what's the post function you're referring to, uh, but generally like, um, yeah. No, in a workflow, think, uh, you, have a, you have a post function in the workflow. So once, uh, Condition is met. You have a post function that does X. So, um, uh, you mean you mean more like a scheduler, or you mean more like a to no, trigger some actions? Yeah, trigger some actions as a post function. So you have a transition from one status to another. Um, that transition meets certain uh, trigger points, and then you run instead of a script, you run a, a forge post function that uh, does I don't know updates your. Confluence page and draws a pretty picture somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I hope I, I got I'm... that correctly. Please correct me in the chat if I'm wrong, but that's what I understand from this question. Mm. Okay, uh, just to answer your question, Jörg. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible. Uh, it's possible, uh, for example, a, a use case where, let's say you have a Kanban board or a, a Jira uh, board, where you want to drag your story ready, ready to work on to in progress. Um, I think uh, I, I've seen an example from Tim. He's a product uh, tech lead at uh, Forge. And I think uh, he has uh, implemented that. It does a check. The function checks something that if the person who is dragging some uh, second ticket into the in progress, it checks it doesn't let, let him to add it because he's already working on one ticket in his progress. How can you work on two tickets? So he has built that. It's, it's possible. Uh, I think uh, for that you have to refer. Um, I think uh, uh, there should be like when I was when I was creating a. Uh, okay, that's a validator. Um, but it may be in the in the documentation somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, again, I, I, I would I would not say I'm an expert. Like I'm just sharing my experience. But definitely, yeah. I think best way to ask is. Uh, Ask the team, like uh, connect on a Slack, a Slack group, put Slack group, and ask them. They would be happy to help you. Exactly. So, in principle, it should be possible. Details refer to the Slack group and the community group. Um, yes, uh, and that's what we discussed. Post function is, is performed after the transition, but that should be possible. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be. So, yeah. So, but again, we will check that and maybe get back to you in the community. If I find it in the documentation or find it in the community group, I will include a link. Uh, if not, um, Slack channel and community group. We cannot be expected to answer all questions. Um, yeah, any more questions from the audience? Ah, did you, did you see, um, Ah, okay. Is there a more fine-grained? Uh, did you have you do you have an experience with a more fine-grained permission setup? So on a project level, for example, can I do? And if I understand you correctly, that that basically I'm a project lead and I want to do some kind of uh, automation within my project, but not not uh, not available for everything, but um, just for the project. Well, I'm a project administrator, so not a project lead, but a project administrator, and I want to change something on the project level is that possible as a permission setup uh, at least uh, at least when i when i was working in like a couple of months back ago uh, the uh, the the previous versions of the forge uh, i was getting a really huge list of permissions i have to check it out um, like which ones i need to give grant more permissions 
but uh, in the interface I presented now that kind of some kind of they made just kind of a, a drop down or a very minimal. Um, I don't know what's the what's going on there. Like what's the latest development there? Um, yeah, I, I, at, at least when I was building like two months back uh, aggressively, uh, two months or three months back, um, it was like you could actually kind of see all the different granular level of what permissions are accessed um, on that particular um, my workspace. Ah, uh, could you could you say some something? Uh, what's included? So um, Trello is included as a function set, or was that because you had it? This Trello um, to, I forgot it, but it was WhatsApp Trello and then sending something. Um, Slack, um, is that Trello is included or not? Or is it just a conference in Jira? Uh, no, I think they're, currently it's only they're focused on Jira and Confluence mainly. I think mm -hmm. uh, they, they, have, they have plans to get into all the different platforms. At least, uh, at least my guess, um, uh, it's like there. I think the next focus will be on a bit bucket, and okay. I think they, they depending on the depending on the interest. Uh, I think they might also jump into Trello maybe in the future, but I, I don't know. Okay. But the next okay. one would be bit bucket maybe next one. Yeah. Okay, and then there's another question: Can you access application data from other apps, or is Forge limited to basic Jira data? Okay. No, uh, no, you can you can access um, data from other, uh, other no, uh, if I understand right, uh, data from other apps. Ah, okay, you mean the same two Forge apps? Um, um, to, be, to be honest, I think it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's, it's a local storage, like it's, it's a global, global uh, attached to that particular, uh, uh, yeah, that particular Jira story or that particular Confluence page, for example. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it's it's open. Uh, it's like a global one, and you're storing uh, storing your data, and you're accessing it. Yes, yeah. it's possible. So in principle, if your if your third party app has a webhook available that allows you to to access the data, it should be possible to include it in the script. You just need the hook and the permissions, I guess. Yeah, at least if I understand the and if I understand the correct, like I have a two forge apps installed on my Confluence page, and mm. my first forge app update some uh, storage API data and my Forge to second app can actually, uh, actually can request uh, uh, access those data. Yes, okay. because if, if I know that key, uh, because it's a, it's a global variable and I, if I ask for that global variable key, which is at the Confluence uh, page level, uh, yes, I can access it. At least I'm talking in the context of like, uh, when I was building something, yes, it was possible. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Arne. That, that was a very interesting um, introduction to Forge and a very interesting demo. Uh, I have quite a bit to write down uh, for the show notes um, because I've heard so much about Forge but have never seen it in action. And it was really good to see that in action and that it's, that it's actually usable. So it's not just a, a, a demo. Uh, the website that I saw today still says beta. So I have to check that it's if, if it's actually out of beta, but for beta, that looked pretty stable uh, because you were doing things basically on the fly and from scratch. So again, thank you very much. That was most interesting. Thank you. And uh, to everybody else, we have a post in the community group. If you have any other questions for Anil, uh, put them there and we can continue the discussion online. Um, and uh, just a reminder that next week, we will have a completely different topic. We will be talking about why Atlassian Cloud and GDPR are best friends forever. And I'm really looking forward to that, how they are best friends forever. Okay, again, have a nice evening. Thank you again. Um, Thank you. And uh, a good time of day wherever you are because we had guests from New York, I saw. So that's morning there, so uh, somewhere. Okay, see you around. Thank you again. Have a nice day. Thank and you. See you next week. Goodbye.